Hey everyone, it's Simone Watson, and it's been a really long time since I posted a video, so I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, I because because of this long break, I've been wanting to come back, but I felt like doing a like life update or something just sounded too daunting. <laughs> so I was like, instead, uh, I'll do a TBR. So. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to talk about some of the books that I would like to possibly read in August. This is a very loose TBR. However, I am doing Battle-a-thon. Um, I'm planning, I'm planning to sign up for Battle-a-thon. And so, um, because of the team that I'll be on in Battle-a-thon, it would be beneficial to me to read books that have a royal word in the title. Um, and I really like that as a challenge. Um, and then I also may be doing the Every Romanticy Challenge at some point, but that doesn't have a strict timeline on it. So I don't think I'm going to focus on that. I, I don't plan to focus on that in this uh, video. Just plan to show you some possibilities. And will I still mood read in August? Almost certainly yes. <laughs> and how much am I going to read in August? We don't know. I, my classes are going to start in, in like the middle of August. So, uh, we're, we're, we're going to see there's, 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 there's a lot going on, but in a good way. Okay. Um, so what I think I decided to do was divide this into some categories based on like what types of books I've been liking to read or wanting to read recently. First of all, I've been wanting to read some historical nonfiction. Um, and so first I have a historical nonfiction book that fits the, um royal word in the title and that is king leopold's ghost by adam hawkschild hawkschild i think Hawk, hawkschild i'm sorry if i'm not saying that right um this book i started reading i think early last year early in 2023 and oh by the way i just got a haircut like a couple days ago yes my hair was longer and now it is short um <laughs> because it's easy okay so yes, King Leopold's Ghost. So yeah, it's called King Leopold's Ghost, a story of greed, terror, and her heroism in colonial Africa. So you can see how there's like a man on the cover and then there's a snake with, it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, there's a snake with a man's face and that face is probably King Leopold II of Belgium. But basically this is a book about how King Leopold II of Belgium, um... He engaged in colonialism in the Congo region of Africa because he could and because he didn't like that his own country was so small in land area. So he thought that it was okay to just go, you know, take land from somebody else. You know, um, so yeah, it's a very, I've read some of the book, but kind of had to take pauses because it's just very, it's very heavy, uh, when it talks about colonialism and just the really, um, disturbing reality of colonialism and how many European nations were trying to colonialize Africa in the, you know, this one specifically focuses on the 19th century, but also talks about some other centuries. So, um, but so far as I've read, it's very well written and really fascinating. Another historical book that I would like to get to soon is um, Powers and Thrones by Dan Jones. Um, I don't have it right now, but it is about the medieval era medieval europe so i'm just very interested in that um and then dan jones has another book coming out in october about henry v and i freaked out a few months ago when i found out that he had a book coming out about henry v because i've been trying to research henry v and dan jones is an author that i want to read and it's like oh he has a book like specifically coming out about henry v so i'm i'm very i'm very interested but that can't be on the August TBR unless I'm able to 
somehow obtain an arc we will see let's just say like I, there's some books i'm really anticipating in these next few months after august that i mean if arcs become available we'll see but then again i don't want to overwhelm myself with arcs because i you know still in school that's the thing i'm still working on my bachelor's degree y'all so uh we have to uh keep the uh yeah we gotta balance things um anyway so i thought that next after thinking about historical nonfiction, i would also bring up some fiction books that i like to read soon so here's one the serpent and the wings of night by carissa broadbent this book this is like one of my favorite book covers that like i've ever seen on a novel it's just very beautiful and um this book was self-published first and then um was very successful and got picked up by a traditional publisher and that's why it has a hardcover now and this is my hardcover from the library so uh well this is my library's hardcover that i'm borrowing you know what i mean so um i'm really excited about this book and this would be if i read it part of the every romanticy challenge um it's for the challenge of what is it i forgot what it is reluctant allies or something i think i got it i already knew i wanted to read it and then in the announcement video for the every romanticy challenge cassidy mentioned it as a wreck for one of the challenges i think it was for reluctant allies but this would also for me count as like either a book that's uh probably like as a book that i already own because i do own the audiobook version so that's another challenge of the every romanticy the way it works you have to like hit at least two challenges with each book so yeah um and then there's more fiction that i want to read but it's very mood based basically i had this thought that for some reason i would really like to read time travel books in august like or books that play with time in some way um <laughs> books that like have like a sort of like a time travel or alternate reality or like those types of things um so i might pick up the other me by sarah zachary jing um which i did read some of in 2021 but then i like had a nightmare <laughs> but i don't remember what the nightmare was about so it might have had nothing to do with the book but after re after that like it made me hesitant to pick the book back up but the book was super super interesting so far as what i read so might just want to start over with that one um but yeah having some time travel books in august could be cool um also having like some you know whatever speculative fiction that i haven't gotten to or um something could be a lot of fun um and maybe adult thrillers sometimes i'm just in the mood to read an adult thriller so i do have not so perfect strangers by ellis stratton uh, i own that so maybe that uh we will see um but then in another category of my might be read i have nonfiction that is um theological in nature okay so i have been buying some theological books recently um and I also uh, was gifted one, so that was cool. Um, and I've checked out some from the library. So one that I have bought is um, The Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Tozer. So you can kind of see it from there. This is not a very long book as far as page count. It's like 134 pages. And I have read some of it, but I would probably start over um but yeah it's just very interesting um and it really makes you think so i'm excited and then there is this one that's from the library but i do own now two books by this author because i bought one and was gifted another one um but this one from the library is like also what i'm really excited about and i just still have not like super super d dove I really don't know the past participle of dive. I haven't dove or haven't dived. I don't know. I haven't really read much of any of the books by this author, but that is The Day the Revolution Began, Reconsidering the Meaning of Jesus Jesus's Crucifixion by N.T. Wright. Okay. So this book, I've just been so excited about it. And I even read a little bit of it during the Amazing Readathon, but I don't know. I just, I didn't 
I didn't finish it. So that would be cool to finish that in August. And then I thought I would put a couple of potential rereads on this list because for Battleathon, so like for Battleathon, you get points for books for the star rating that you give to books. And I can't remember, I would have to double check the rules. Like, does it matter if the book is a reread? Because for me, if I know a book was five stars, I might, you know, it would be, it's tempting to just reread that book because it's like, I, it's likely going to be five stars still, right? Maybe. But it's not just for that. It's because I really, these are books that I really love. So I want to read them. I want to reread them because I enjoy them. Not so much like just to get points. Um, but I do, when I want to find a five star read, I will often go back to the same author that has written a previous five star. And that's, you know, tends to work. Um, but anyway, I will just show you the books that I have. And these are both from my university's library and I have had them for a long time. And so we'll eventually probably need to return them. Well, um, no, not probably. We'll definitely need to return them soon. So this one is The Boy in the Black Suit by Jason Reynolds. And I'll just show you the other one too. This is Everlost by Neil Shusterman. This book, The Boy in the Black Suit, I just want to tell you whether I reread it or not, I just want to tell you that this is an extremely high recommendation for me. Anybody that wants a book to read that you are, you know, you're ready to read a book that deals with some sad topics, just go ahead and read this book, please, because this book, um, basically, okay, I will sell you on it, hopefully. It's about this black boy named Matt, who is literally my book bestie, because he is just such a cool character. Um, but anyway, he's 17 and his mom has recently passed away. And so Matt has this secret shame, which is that he cried at his mom's funeral. And so because he cried, he feels very ashamed of that because he feels like I'm not supposed to cry. I'm supposed to like, you know, like be, be tough and all that. You know, that's, that's how he feels because that's what's been impressed upon him by society. And so he gets a job at a funeral uh, parlor as an assistant or something but his secret is that he wants to see like he wants to like be in the funerals and watch other people cry because it makes him feel a little bit better about the fact that he cried at his mom's funeral so the whole thing with this book is that it is the journey of like the journey that he goes through over those few months after his you know mom's death and like his way his learning his it's his journey of learning like that it is okay to cry because it is okay to cry so i just want to share this book with as many people as possible especially with black boys because it does give you this message that it is okay to cry um but really for everybody is this this is a this is a i think a relevant message for everybody and i dare you to read the first page like go to like amazon or google books or wherever read the first page of this book it will immediately grab you I'm, I'm telling y'all, okay? So, anyway, uh, end rant, or rant, gush, I don't know. And then the other one is Ever Lost by Neil Shusterman. So, this is also a book that deals with death, and this is also one of my favorite books. So, this one, I can't say that I would recommend for everybody. The Boy in the Black Suit, as we mentioned, deals with grief, so that could be triggering to some people. Ever Lost is even more something that could be triggering to some people because it specifically involves children um, who have died. They are ghosts. So I can't, like, make sure that you're in, you know, the right place to read it, I guess I would say. But for me, I was very sad and was actually depressed when I read this book and it actually helped me feel better because the way the topic is handled is like so well thought out and it's like gentle and like the way that like gentle sounds weird but it's like the way that Neil writes this topic of like these characters who are teenagers who have died it's like he writes it with this kind of hopefulness and the characters are all on this journey of like accepting what has happened to them and you kind of get the sense, you kind of get the impression that, like, they're going to be okay. And so it comforts you 
for like what you think about their families because it makes you think maybe their family can be okay too because like these kids are like actually okay even though this is fictional this is a fictional portrayal of death this is not what i believe actually happens after death but um the characters being ghosts and then there are just neil has a way of like having things be really deep and thought-provoking and having a lot of symbolism and having really detailed world building and so yeah this one is the first in a trilogy called the skinjacker trilogy and um if you're in the place to read it then i do highly recommend it but i'm not going to say that everybody should read everything because sometimes things can be triggering so i just want everyone to please proceed with caution <clears throat> so thank you for watching Again, those are some books that I might read in August. I might read none of those. I might read something completely different. I I just want to be honest there because I know that I'm not the only person who can be a bit of a mood reader. Um, but I just want to like be honest about it that like I might be doing some complete mood reading. But going back to the same authors has worked for me as far as like going to the authors that I have given five stars. Like Neil is Neil Schusterman and Jason Reynolds, like could I read some of their other books? We'll see. We will see. But thank you for watching. And uh, I'll see you soon. I'll have to update you on my life and my writing. Here's a, uh, a, a, a hint. As mentioned earlier, I'm still working on my bachelor's degree, but I'm now less than a year out from graduating. So that is very, very exciting. Um, please let me know what's going on with y'all and what y'all are reading and what's going on with y'all's writing and stuff. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.